Hey guys, Coach Kuiper here working base running today. Uh, with me here is friend and colleague, Coach Alan Pavez. Coach Pavez has been coaching high school and college for over 20 years. Uh, he's my guy when I have questions about base running, the new trends, uh, things to talk about, new ways to coach it. Uh, so what we tried to do today in today's video uh, is to go through primaries and secondaries at second base. So we're going to go ahead and go back. Coach Pavez is going to work us through um, taking leads from second base. So if we go back to the basics, and again, there are multiple ways to do things. This is just a way that, that we've come up with, that he's come up with, that takes the guesswork out of it, especially for lower level players, even up in through the college guys. Uh, just a nice way to do it. So just if you watch the video over at first base, you saw the standardized 12 foot lead, the right left uh, shuffle shuffle. Here at second base, we're gonna have the opportunity to do um, um, a little bit more, but before that, uh, again, if you watch the, the video on first base, you know this, but we're going to do uh, an acronym called SOOB, S-O-O-B. Before you take your lead, you're always going to get the sign from the third base coach, uh, check the number of outs, check where your outfielders are positioned, and find the baseball, which should be uh, at the uh, on the mound. So once you've done all those things, go ahead and prepare to take your lead. You're going to go right, left, right, left, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. So one of the differences I want to bring up again is at first base, it was right, left, turn, shuffle, shuffle. Here it is right, left, right, left, turn, shuffle, shuffle. So with being at second base and no guy holding you on, plus a more difficult throw for the pitcher, we've got an opportunity to get a bigger lead. I think inherently we all know that. This lead right here at first base, we were at about 12 feet. Here we're at about 18 feet. So one of the one of the reasons that we are doing this standardized lead in a very methodical way is that is so that every player knows exactly where he is on the field. As a pitching guy, I look for tendencies for that base runner, the guy who peeks back at the base when he gets his lead. If I see a guy peeking, I know that I can get ready to pick him off. If I can uh, pick over right when he peaks. So by doing the standardized lead, you do not rely on the cut of a grass, on peaking, uh, on any of those things to know exactly where you are on the ball field. So again, we're going to go ahead and show the primary. So it's right, left, right, left, turn, shuffle, shuffle. Okay, so now every player is a little bit different in height and stature. You might also have a guy who's really quick and feels like he can take a little bit more of a shuffle and get further off. Let's just say that this is the starting point that we like to use for these primaries. All right, um, did I miss anything on primaries? We good? All right, let's go into secondary. So from here, we're gonna take, um, and this is again, sorry, I should that Coach Pava has showed you are with zero and one out. And the reason he's directly in the baseline is with zero and one out, we're, our primary objective is to get to third base. Yes, we want to score, but this puts us in a position where we are as close to third base as possible, shortest distance between which is a straight line. And this gives the greatest opportunity to steal third base, take it on a wild pitch, etc. He is as close to third base as he can be with zero. Actually, let's, let's show the primary with uh, two outs. The reason being why there's a difference is with two outs, you're running on contact and you're probably not really trying to steal third. You've probably heard that adage, don't, you know, don't get the first or third out at, at third base. But in this case, uh, we're going to advocate for gaining some depth on the primary when taking a lead from second base. And how you do that, you've seen a lot of guys take walking leads and whatnot. What we like to do, and again, there's multiple ways to do this, is take a couple steps backwards and then do the right, left, right, left, shuffle, shuffle. Now, if you know geometry and you did exactly that, you're now a little further away from second base than you were before if you were directly in the baseline. So one, we might suggest taking a smaller shuffle shuffle, but realistically, this is where you and your third base coach are going to be in sync. You're going to know how far to get off based on your comfort level, and you should be able to get back from here from this standardized primary. Uh, but if, as you're taking this depth, you don't have to get off quite as far because again, you're not, you're, your primary threat is not to steal third, but it is to put yourself with a little bit of depth in a good position so that you can round and cut that, uh, that third base on your way into home. Uh, get that for depth? All right, so now we're gonna go into secondary leads at second base. So he's gonna go ahead and left, turn, shuffle, shuffle, and this is all zero T's in the baseline. Okay, secondary, pretty much the same. Gonna shuffle, shuffle, 
And if you can get two to three shuffles, that's what you want to do, land on the right foot so you can turn and go or drive and come back. A couple qualifiers we're going to make about this 18 foot lead. So we did the right, left, right, left, shuffle, shuffle, and you're at 18 feet. Now, ideally we want to be at a primary lead where you can get back safe even if a guy is holding you on, but let's be realistic. This 18 foot lead puts you a little bit in the danger zone. This is a standardized lead that we're going to take with our infielders playing deep and back. Uh, what we like to coach is we like to have a guy either taking one step back, if the coach says back one, you guys are gonna have your own language. Um, from this like 15, so if you're at 18, we would, we would suggest potentially only going back to about that 15 foot lead there. And from there, you should never be retreating to go back to 12, because from 12 feet, that, that you're gonna be safe even if a guy's standing and holding you on. There's no point to get back to this 12 foot lead in a hard way. So you're either gonna take that one shuffle back and uh, and be comfortable there or you're gonna your coach is gonna say even from here you might say back because the guy daylights you and you're gonna go back in hard so it's either that one step back or you're going back hard there's no going back sort of hard a couple times uh, as pitchers we want you to we want the base runners to go and get their momentum going back but we don't want to see that if you're either gonna take one shuffle back or excuse me one step one shuffle back or you're gonna go all the way back hard in um, let's see a couple other qualifiers here. So if you're at this 18 foot lead, what might make you take that step back? Uh, three things that, that really come into play. One is where the shortstop is. is and again, you guys are going to have your own language of what you're going to say where the, the shortstop is positioned. Two is the runner's foot speed. If you're a slower guy, this 18 foot lead might feel a little bit excessive, but if you're a fast guy, it might not. So you can either uh, adjust this slightly based on your own foot speed and go to a 15 or take smaller shuffles, things like that. Uh, but it still should be a way that you can standardize your lead. And then last but not least, the other threat is the pitcher's picks. If a guy has quick feet and he can show that he can do a hop turn quickly at a second, then you got to take that into account too. All right, guys, so you just got done watching one of the three base running videos, uh, whether it be taking primaries and secondaries from first, second, or third. I uh, wanted to kind of do a quick recap and some topics that apply to all bases. One of the things that I like to preach about any of these skills, whether it be base running, pitching, etc., is mastering the things that are within our control. Uh, there are so many things in the game of baseball and in life that are out of our control. I believe that one of the ways we can excel is becoming a master of these these skills that are <clears throat> that are absolutely within our control. Um, Coach, what are some of the ta key takeaways you have when running when, when teaching base running? Uh, some of the key takeaways especially to preach to, to all base runners because at some point in time everyone is going to be a base runner and that is when you get to first base your job is not finished right so you can be a good base runner and not be fast by taking advantage of opportunities knowing your own strengths and weaknesses taking advantage of, of mistakes that other teams make or, or tells that they might have and always looking to advance to the next base that is always hunting to advance to the next base being a base hunter and, and that's a, it's a mindset that you have to change of, uh, okay, I'm happy that I, that I hit a single or I got a walk and I'm at first base to, okay, I'm, I'm glad I'm here, but how can I help my team by moving to the next base, right, in any way possible. So that's where we look to take advantage of some of these things by standardizing it. Uh, if you watch some of the pitching videos, you'll know how we start taking advantage of bad base running leads. Um, but aside from that, uh, Coach, I, one, one of the things that I've heard you say over and over over the years, you talk about the, the phase of the game that's under coach, base running being one of what do you What do you like to say? It's the special teams of baseball. Uh, and I think the way that you said it the best is, right, it's, it's the way that you score runs. Right? And it's... It, it's not coached often or very well. Uh, it's usually used at conditioning at the end of practice, but you just said it that um, the way you score runs is by running bases. And how many of you practice running bases? Yeah. It may not take a ton of practice. You may not spend a ton of time uh, doing these things. You know, it, it, it's almost as if these are the skills that we think that should be taught and mastered quickly, and yet take take a bit to ingrain them into becoming habits. So anyways, there's a bunch of material. Really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, as they say. Uh, if you have any other suggestions or things you'd like to learn about, please uh, drop them in a comment. Other than that, see you next time, guys. Thanks.